Here we go. After webinar party starts now. Totally informal. No script, unscripted. Just wrote down a few ideas on on sharing this. Let's look at the the UK edition of Legacy, and then I'll I'll go into some of these uh, ideas here. Excited about the showing you the recording of the the quarter dates. Okay, so switching over to Legacy, uh, just right up here under under Options, go ahead and click Select Language, and there you've got your UK <laughs> edition of English. So uh, we've talked about this a lot recently with our, oh, with our German edition, with our Swedish edition, since uh, and our and our Dutch edition. So we've had several webinars on that uh, recently. Okay, what I'd like to do is talk a little bit about the quarter dates. So Kirsty gave you the the perfect explanation of what quarter dates are. Now. We've over the over the years. I'm going to switch to my sample file and mess it up instead of playing with my personal file here. But over the years, we've had uh, a lot of people wanting to record those quarter dates here in Legacy uh, while they await the the uh, original to come from the the general record office. Uh, and so, let's go and take a look at the help file and I'm gonna just type in the word quarter so this will be your reference and I'm gonna scroll down to right here so uh, yeah Kirsty talked about the quarter dates uh, and how they relate to the indexes of the records of the general record office and so there's the the quarters like she did explain earlier in legacy you can you can type in the uh, those quarters in this format right here so month followed by a space and then the letter Q and then the space and then the year and if you if you'll follow that format then legacy will recognize that as a as an, a, an acceptable date format in other words it's not going to pop up a, a potential problem warning for you and so let's just let's just give that a try I'm gonna type in uh, March quarter and let's let's do 1867 and I tab to the next field and this is great because uh, legacy is now able to uh, properly uh, approximate or calculate ages for you um, and and other things because legacy does have the uh, this ability for you to record your quarter dates yeah uh, Kirsty pro would probably recommend uh, don't leave that in there. You want to you want to make sure and go and get the actual index or the actual records from the index. But so maybe a good placeholder. Okay, back back over here. I'm gonna go to the English Gazetteer links because that's just a that's a quick one. As Christy was showing, um, some sites, some databases about learning about places. It reminded me of something that we have that we've added into research guidance. I'm going to switch over here to one of uh, my wife's side of the tree that that I uh, helped her research a little while back. So, uh, born in uh, Yorkshire in England in 1879, I'm going to go to his research guidance screen by clicking on this button here. And this, what it does here on the timeline tab on the on step number one, it analyzes where the person uh, lived and when they lived there and then it's going to give me suggestions based on that so I've got uh, various suggestions here on my survey uh, on the local histories I think we do ha yeah there's a good link in there for the county histories of England and I believe yeah there's a whole series uh, the Victoria history of the various places and so uh, we've got those in there as well and even no, I don't have that. I, I was thinking it would have the specific call numbers there at the library, but uh, it's even telling you that these are online, and so just click on the on, online button. And if I'm just curious now, is okay. So that link, it looks like they may have updated it, but let me just go like this and see if that website's still accurate. Yeah, it look, certainly looks like it is. So it'll it'll point you to the right spot. Anyways, uh, on the suggested sources, there. There's usually one of these suggestions. It will say gazetteers. 
There it is. So there's Gazetteers, and there's a, a check mark there on that online column, and and so uh, th this will take you to uh, a list of of some of the popular ones there. So just click on a vision of Britain through time, and and here's where you can type in the name of the place. So let's do a, a, an example. He was born in Wentworth. So let's just type in Wentworth and click search. There's two of them, and the one that he is in, I would think, would be in, here in the West Riding. So here we go. We get a map, some information about the place. Show further info. Yeah, here we go. So uh, some neat, neat things there. So uh, just go into research guidance for your English ancestor and, and locate gazetteers here, and uh, and off you go. Gazetteer of British place names. Let's just check that one out. Gazetteer.co.uk switches to gazetteer.org.uk, and I'm going to type in the exact same place of Wentworth here. And here's a couple of different Wentworths. Let's view the full entry. So some additional information here, and, and the map will uh, load in just a bit. So let me close those down. Now I wanted to also show you about the, uh, the English timelines. And so uh, let's go up to Edwin Haig. So Edwin born in 1857 in Wentworth in Yorkshire. I'm going to go to his chronology tab. Uh, Kirsty, if you're wondering what uh, what to do next, uh, you can try and find when and where Edwin uh, and his wife died. So thank you. Okay, let's go over to his chronology tab. Down here, just a second, I, I'm going to turn, <laughs> turn that off. Okay, so here's uh, Edwin's timeline. It's gathering all the information about him from wherever it is, the births of his kids, his marriages, the censuses. So this is all the information I've previously typed in. But as we know, as researchers, we know that history uh, adds to a person's life and, and affects their lives, which then uh, also creates records for us. So I'll go to display options and right here where it says include historical timelines I'm going to click on select and here I'll let me remove that and I'll make this a little bigger for you. There we go. Let's click on add a timeline file and this is a list of the various historical timelines that are included in Legacy. And I see here there's a, there's a few here for the British general history. And I'm going to choose the one for the time period when Edwin uh, lived. And I'll click OK. And I'll click Save. And Save one more time. And what you're going to see is anything here in orange, that's a part of that historical timeline. So here in 1858 uh, is one of them. The Principal Probate Registry began handling all English probates. Well, that was when he was one year old. Maybe that would apply better for his parents. Uh, Darwin publishes The Origin of Species in 1859. Prince Albert dies in 1861. And uh, secret voting. I mean, j some interesting information, but also some information that could help you uh, know what's going on, uh, like like uh, these wars here. Looks like this ancestor of my wife's was of the age to have potentially uh, served in that. I don't know anything about that, but that could point me in, in, in a new direction to help me solve uh, a war. The fifth full British census. So uh, in because this historical timeline is turned on and it's suggesting here there is a census at that time, I ought to look further in my timeline just to make sure, have I found him in that census? And if not, maybe this uh, historical timeline is that clue that I needed. So, uh, so there you have it. Now I'm going to go over to... Uh, to the chat area and see if there's any other questions or comments about this. Celia, oh Celia, I I love this. <laughs> cool. Peggy says, do we need to be in the in the country version to find the gazetteers? Uh, no, Peggy. Uh, here, let's go back. Yeah, when you're when you're in uh, research guidance here. This is uh, the suggestion. The suggestions that show up here, they're going to be s uh, specific for that person uh, based on when and where they lived. So here, this is a different person now, William Dundas. 
uh, born in Ireland, and so here I can see I've got some various uh, records that are being suggested for Ireland, and notice they're not suggesting that I look uh, in England at that time, although it is suggesting a look in the United States, and it's saying that because, well, he ended up there at some point. Okay. Brian, is that Brian in Canada? What about the Legacy Australia edition? Well, basically, what those different editions will do is it will just it'll change the language and uh, of the of the screens of the reports. So all the timelines are they're still going to be there for you. That everything that you're seeing here is available in all of the languages. Okay, uh, Pauline, how do I get back to English on the chat panel? You, <laughs> she seems to be in French. I have no idea. All right. Well, that looks... I think we've got it. Yeah, we've covered all the questions and comments here. Okay, and thank you for being here, Susan, uh, and all the rest of you. And we'll see you this Friday for the last of our Freedom Webinar Series. I'm off to lunch. Have a good day. Bye, everyone.